The Stur Valley has a network of designated wildlife sites and protected areas, including several sites of special scientific interest, as well as the Dedham Vale area of outstanding natural beauty, all of which support several wildlife conservation initiatives. The open landscape here provides a home for over 1,500 plant species, 175 bird species and almost 1,000 moth species. Hi, my name's Emma Black and I'm a Countryside Projects Officer for the Dedham Vale Area of Outstanding Natural Beauty and Store Valley. The Store Valley is a quintessential lowland English river valley landscape. It's got lots of rolling hills and woodland, meadows, hedges and of course the river store which meanders along the bottom of its, in its floodplain and uh, it basically makes up the border between Essex and Suffolk. It's a, a beautiful area and there's lots of wildlife to see and you can see this wildlife throughout the year at various sites in the Store Valley. One of the best ways to see wildlife is to just walk along some of the footpaths. There's plenty of footpaths in the Store Valley. There's our long distance route which is the Store Valley path as well as lots of other promoted routes which you can download information from our website. There's lots of other places that you can see wildlife. We have lots of country parks um, in the Store Valley. Right at the top of the valley, you've got East Town Park near Haver Hill, and then you've got Clare Castle Country Park, Melford Country Park, and Cornard Country Park. All these sites have got good visitor services and are places where you can go and enjoy nature. As well as these country parks, we've also got lots of nature reserves and um, sites which are protected for their wildlife, which are called triple SI, sites of special scientific interest. And at the bottom of the Store Valley, we have a protected landscape called the Dedham Vale Area of Outstanding Natural Beauty. And this has been um, designated for its outstanding natural beauty and special qualities. Some of the nature reserves are places where you can go and spot wildlife that is uh, maybe a little bit rarer. We've got Fox Earth Nature Reserve, we've got Sudbury Common Lands, and we've also got Arga Fen and Spouse's Vale Woodland Complex. One of the places where you can go to see wildlife and learn how to bring more wildlife into your garden, your wild space, is down at Flatford. The RSPB there have got a wildlife garden called Flatford Wildlife Garden. I'm Shirley Sampson, I'm the warden of the wildlife garden here at Flatford and we've been running it for about 10 years now and our aim is to show people and hopefully inspire them with some ideas that they can take back to their own gardens to be able to share the garden with wildlife. The garden is open uh, every year between uh, roughly Easter and the end of the autumn half term, and seven days a week. It's not a terrifically big site, for the RSPB it's quite an unusual reserve. Uh, it's only about a third of a hectare, and it's a lovely space for visitors to enjoy, to have a stroll, to walk around. Uh, during school holidays we always have activities on for the children as well, with the aim being to uh, connect them with nature, you know, give them that sense of awe and wonder. Our, our, our kind of reason for being here is, is to uh, teach and inspire people with ideas that they can take home to their own gardens. Uh, if you think, uh, you know, this, this is only a third of a hectare, um, so, uh, you know, individually, what difference can one garden make? But if, if we can inspire every one of those 40 or 50 or 60,000 visitors that we have every year to just take one little idea home to their garden, if you think gardens in this country cover something like 8,000 square kilometres, that's a huge amount. That's, that's something like six times the amount of land that the RSPB owns in terms of nature reserves and we're Western Europe's 
largest land-owning conservation charity. So there's tremendous potential. And wildlife doesn't really care whether it's your garden or your neighbor's garden. They don't worry about fences and that sort of thing. It's just good habitat, potentially, if we can get people to take a few ideas home. And, and um, none of it is particularly difficult or onerous. A wildlife garden doesn't have to be a, you know, a, a mess of brambles and nettles. It can still be a lovely space for people to enjoy as well. And, uh, and that's what we aim to do here, is to show people how. Hi, I'm uh, Alex Moore Dalus. I'm the Nature Recovery Officer for the Dedham Vale AOMB and Suffolk Coast and Heaths AOMB. I'm just going to tell you a little bit about some of the things that you can do recreationally in the in the Stewart Valley. We're down at Cataway Picnic Site at the moment, and this is a really good portage point. And there's some canoeists in the background at the moment, actually, and you can come and um, paddle way up your way up to to Flatford or go a bit further up up into Dedham. This is a, a place that you can come and fish as well. So, you know, it gets you get busier to, uh, over the weekend. It's quieter th throughout the week. So it's, it's a really good place to, to come and enjoy the river at, at, at your own pace. And it's a really good location for seeing wildlife as well. I mean, you're, if you go out on the river, there'll be some common things that you'll almost certainly see. You know, you'll see more hens and, and mute swans. But if you, if you paddle up towards Flatford, you may get some rarer species. I mean, um, things like marsh harrier can be seen uh, um, flying over because it backs onto the RSPB's Catawade Marshes Nature Reserve, which is actually a really important nature reserve for, for birds. It has the highest population of breeding lapwing in, in North Essex and 10% of the entire wintering population of birds on the estuary will make their way to Cataway Marshes. So it's actually a really good place for, for spotting wildlife. If you catch the water here at the right time, it can be really clear, as it is now actually. And so it's definitely worth having a look in the water as you're paddling. And you can see lots of different types of fish. Um, keep an eye out for pike, roach and perch and also some of the birds that are around on the fringes looking out for, for fish and amphibians. And if you're really lucky you may catch a glimpse of, of a water vole. Often it's about trying to spot the signs of them and that can help you get an understanding of where they're likely to be. And they'll often you'll see little piles of vegetation where they've been eating at a 45 degree angle. If you're even luckier still, you could catch a glimpse of, of, of an otter. Otters have made a res resurgence in, in the last 10, 15 years or so, and they are doing a lot better than, than they used to be, which is great news. They are very difficult to spot. And, and again, the signs of otters are, are easier to see than the otters than themselves. But there are locations further upstream where otters are regularly spotted um, up near Ballingdon Bridge in, in Sudbury is, is a good example. So um, behind me you've got the White Bridge and Cataway Marshes. This land was taken over by the RSPB in 2005 and it's, it's basically grazing marsh, grassland and ditches and it's triple SI and, and it's really important for breeding lapwing and, and breeding red shank. And there's a public footpath that I'm standing on now that's a really good place to walk along and where you can see some of the birds and wildlife that comes to Catawabe Marshes. Hi, welcome to Fox Earth Meadows. I'm Mark Perina and I'm the, uh, the reserve manager here, working for a charity, a Russia UK. We're a Christian conservation charity and our aim is to engage 
Christians and people with a love for nature. So this piece of land is 12 acres of River Stour floodplain meadow. This pond is uh, one of the important features on the reserve for uh, dragonflies. And it's dragonflies and damselflies that have always been the focus of the uh, conservation efforts on this site. And we continue that to this day. Here we've got one of the loveliest views on the site, uh, imaginatively called Big Pond. Uh, because it is the biggest water body on the site and again it's a fantastic um, habitat for breeding dragonflies in, which can be seen spring summer through to the autumn it's also a, a favorite spot for um, our art days that we have here so we get people sort of drawing and painting the scenery of the meadows and this is one of the favorite uh, views that we've got In 2018, we had this um, 130 meter boardwalk installed, a partnership with Essex County Council. It has the effect of keeping the footpath which bisects the site open all year round. Uh, the middle of the meadows will flood, so this maintains that access. It is recycled plastic. Uh, I wouldn't like to estimate how many thousands of, or millions of uh, plastic bottles it took to make this. There's all sorts of plastic compacted into this. If you come here in July and August, you will see a riot of colour here. It's absolutely magnificent. And I do urge you to come and have a look at the meadows in their full glory when the late summer um, wetland plants are flowering. When you walk across the boardwalk, stop a while in the middle, uh, by the, the tall vegetation, the, the reed mace and the, the, uh, the phalaris uh, canary grass because you will, you will hear the warblers and the reed buntings and uh, the breeding birds, the breeding summer visitors in, in the wetland. It, it can be an absolute delight. So I'd urge you if you like um, birdsong to come and just stand and listen and watch. Behind me you can see our resident uh, Dexter cattle, so that's Mars and Wanda. They're here really because somebody wanted somewhere to graze them, but they benefit us because they're part of our management of the grassland. But uh, as well as being part of the scientific approach to managing the site, they're also a delightful addition, um, being extremely well behaved. No trip to the meadows would be complete without coming and having a look at the River Stour uh, on a particularly, we think, beautiful stretch of that river. It's a fantastic habitat for breeding fish, invertebrates, and also breeding birds as well as reed warblers will also use the river to, to nest in. So come and just uh, Enjoy the peace and tranquility of this stretch of the river. As you walk one of the area's many circular or linear walks, you'll be taken off the beaten track into some classic English landscape. You'll see delightful undulating scenery and a great variety of natural habitat, with many excellent viewpoints across quiet, unspoiled countryside. Many walks will take you along meandering riverside paths, dappled in light from cricket bat willows and ancient pollarded willows, 
which drape over the river as cows and sheep graze the sweet lush grass. Look out for the flash of blue of the kingfisher as it darts along looking for small fish or the majestic dragonflies which fly around the river's edge. Listen for the plop of the water bowl as it jumps into the river or the sound of the elusive cuckoo in early summer. If you're quiet, you might even see an otter family playing in the river or a hare or roe deer as you walk through the small hedge-lined fields where the trill of the skylark can be heard. In spring, woodlands will be a haze of blue from the bluebells and in summer, the beautiful flower-rich pastures will be full of colourful flowers such as knapweed, fieldscapers and bird's foot treffle, all buzzing with the sound of insect life. You may even spot barn owls hunting, especially towards dusk. In this film, we've explored just some of the places in the Stur Valley where visitors can come to experience nature and get close to wildlife. For more information about visiting these places, as well as other nature reserves, country parks and woodlands, please go to www.deadandvalesturvalley.org forward slash visiting, where you can view and download our Nature in the Stur Valley leaflet guide.